So six months ago, I bought the special edition Leica Q2 Ghost. And a few weeks ago, Leica introduced the Q3, of course. So today we're gonna go over my thoughts on this camera after six months and if I regret my decision. And also thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So what up y'all? I've talked about this camera a little bit on the channel since I got it, but it's primarily been a behind the scenes camera for me. I've actually shot a commercial project with it as well, but today we're gonna go out and use it. I'm gonna show you some of the photos that I made with this recently and we're just gonna talk about this camera. Now this is numbered 131 out of 150. So this is not just the ghost camera. This is the special Hodinkee edition. These are numbered. It's a collector's item, but I've used it just like any other camera. It's got scratches on the bottom. It's actually not holding up anywhere near as well as my Leica QP did, which had that special PVD coating. This one is showing quite a bit of wear, which is completely fine with me. I didn't buy this camera to baby it. I bought it to use it and have it be a daily camera. Now, let's start with some of the positives. First and foremost, convenience is the reason I love the first Q. It's the reason I love the Q2 and I'm sure it's why I would love the Q3 that recently came out. This camera is just the perfect everyday usable camera. You can get high level professional work with it. You can get high level social media work with it. You can just get high level day to day personal life photography if that's what you're using it for in a very convenient package. Now obviously with this camera the colors are on point, the contrast, the sharpness, everything you'd expect from the images on point. I personally actually though prefer the files from the Leica Q versus the Q2. This really high megapixel sensor, it just looks different. Now, most people watching this video are not going to really care because both are great. It's just me kind of splitting hairs and nitpicking because I was so used to that original Q camera and the sensor on this one is different. So I do prefer the original Q photos, but I love the resolution you get with this. I love being able to crop images and basically do whatever you want to them and also so they have a level of almost hyper sharpness at that high resolution, which sometimes is good, sometimes can be a little bit of a detriment, but when that happens, I just throw a Promis filter on here and everything's fine. So like I mentioned in the introduction, Leica recently announced their Q3, which I had a feeling was coming because anytime Leica has announced a ghost version of their camera, the predecessor to that camera comes shortly after, but I was optimistic thinking, Nah, there's no way. They're not gonna do this again, but that's exactly what they did. And I'm not gonna lie, there was a little bit of regret there. Now, before I talk about that, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is hands down the easiest way to build a website and take your photography business to the next level. Squarespace is what I use for my website, edmundramp.com. It's what I use to sell presets, connect with my audience, and also sell prints and merchandise. And what I love about Squarespace is how easy it is to build a website on their platform. It only takes one afternoon to build a beautiful site using their drag and drop templates. I have multiple videos on this channel breaking down how to build different types of websites. So I'll go ahead and link those in the description down below so you can follow along with one of them. Another thing I love about Squarespace is their email marketing tools. Squarespace allows you to capture an audience and create email lists so you can connect with your audience outside of social media. And these email templates are just as easy to use as their website templates. I can't recommend Squarespace enough, but try it out for yourself. Go to the link in the description down below to start a free trial or go to squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp to start that free trial. Follow one of those tutorials that I linked in the description. And when you're ready to sign up, use code Evan Ramp to save 10%. That's squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp to start a free trial and use code Evan Ramp to save 10% at checkout. Now, let's talk about my regrets with this camera. So, this is a really cool camera. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. That is one of the great things about Leica is they mix this form and function. You get a high level professional camera, which like I mentioned, I'm able to use for things like commercial work, social media, day-to-day -day photography, literally anything and get a good result. And it's in a beautiful package. So if you're someone who appreciates design and you appreciate just what goes into crafting something like this, yeah. It's, it's awesome, you know, but I did not buy this solely for that. Yes, I love that element of Leica, but it is a $6,000 camera after all. And I paid the premium because this is the numbered edition. So for me, having this special camera doesn't really do anything for me outside of, you know, a little bit of clout. It looks cool and thumbnails and stuff like that. But I wish I had just waited and got the newest version of this camera so I could have all the newest features. Why use 
use something that's outdated just because it looks cool. I would say that is the core of the regret that I have. You know, if I'm gonna spend $6,000 on something, I want it to be something that isn't technically outdated. Even though I personally believe that cameras and technology has plateaued, there's nothing really new happening in the camera world, you can use a DSLR from five years ago, and if you're using it strictly for photo, you're gonna get an incredible result with it. And that is what the Q is designed for, is photo. The video capabilities on the Q3 is something that is very interesting, and that might be the reason that people are willing to invest that money and dive into it, is because you might finally be able to use it for video, but in my opinion, the Q2 and the Q lineup is not designed for that. So for me, making a $6,000 investment into a tool that I'm using basically every day, I kind of regret it not being an investment that is up to par with what is capable with cameras today. And you know, the fact that the new Leicas have a flip screen is really cool. I know they're eventually gonna add that to the SL lineup, which is my biggest problem with that camera. Anytime Alec uses it for videos, we really struggle because we can't flip the screen up. And the same thing applies to the Q camera, even though it's not as big of a deal because we're not doing video with it. It would be nice to have that flip up screen and be able to, you know, be at a low angle and not be laying on the floor with the camera, but that's sort of nitpicking as well. My main regret is owning a camera that looks cool and I just don't really care about it looking cool. I care about it doing a job, which it does well, but obviously with there being an element of slight technological advancement on the Q3, doesn't really make sense for me to have this, especially considering I'm using it. You know, I'm not having this in a safe, making it a collectible item. It's not really collectible anymore because it's really beat up, especially on the bottom. So those are my thoughts on the Q2 Ghost after six months, an incredible camera. If you're into the aesthetic of it, you're gonna still love it, but if you're purchasing something for $6,000, makes more sense to have the thing that has the latest and greatest.